Hi everybody, my name is Ron Tomeyan and I'm here today with Wex Photo Video to show you something very, very exciting. Sony have announced the brand new Alpha 6700 APS-C camera and today we're in Brecon Beacons, we're going to be putting it through its paces. They've also announced the 70-200 f4 lens and a brand new microphone as well. So stay tuned as we'll be showing that later on in the video. So without further ado, let's get testing. One thing that's instantly noticeable about this body is its form factor. Not only is it ergonomic, but it's incredibly small and lightweight. I mean, you notice the difference in weight when you put the battery inside the body, and that's saying something. It also feels very well built. Even though it's made from entirely recyclable material, it feels sturdy. So I think this is a great travel companion. If you don't want to take out maybe a bigger body or full frame camera, then this is definitely something that you should look into getting. <laughs> Let's talk about the sensor. Now, the sensor in this body is a 26 megapixel Exmor R APS-C sensor. Now, that means you're going to have a crop factor of approximately 1.5, which basically means if you have a 50 millimeter lens on this body, it will equate to a 75 millimeter lens. Now, some of you might be wondering why you wouldn't opt for a full frame to get that full spectrum from your lens. So some of the benefits for opting for an APS-C or a Super 35 camera is that its form factor means that it's smaller, it's lighter. Not only that, but the glass you get is also cheaper. The amazing thing about this and Sony's ecosystem is that if you do want to buy full frame glass, you can use it with this camera. So that if you do choose to upgrade to a full frame system in the future, the lenses will work on that body too. All in all, it's a great competitor. Now the cool thing about this body and the technology inside it is that the autofocus has drastically improved from its predecessor and it's incredibly fast at focusing. I've noticed especially with animals and when you've got the animal recognition target on it just tracks their eye perfectly and it's very very quick. It makes shooting wildlife really easy actually. Right, let's talk about the autofocus a little bit more. So, the Alpha 6600 was made around four years ago, and since then, Sony's technology has come leaps and bounds, including its autofocusing system. So, the Alpha 6600 has 425 auto phase detection points. Now, the new version, the Alpha 6700, has a whopping 759. Now, that's a major improvement. Not only that, but the AI system that's taken from the A7R5 has been incorporated into this body as well. That means that you can focus on people, animals, insects, birds, planes, cars, and even buses. And it's really simple just to change that in the menu system, which has also been updated to the newer version. You can also customize each individual setting. So for example, if you wanted to focus on the left eye when you're shooting people, and you wanted to focus on the right eye when you're shooting birds, you can actually go into the systems and customize that yourself. And when you switch between the two, it will automatically remember those settings. Pretty cool. And the last thing in the focusing system that's quite impressive is that it can focus down to minus three EV in low light situations. So that's perfect for any of you low light shooters out there. Hi everyone, I'm George. I've actually been behind the camera for this review, but I just wanted to hop on camera just to tell you a little bit about the video capabilities of the A6700. Now, first off, it shoots 4K, which is obviously amazing. That's a really nice crisp resolution. It's gonna give you loads of detail there. Now it shoots 4K at up to 30 frames, 60 frames, and 120 frames a second. So let's cover the 30 and the 60 frames first. Now the really exciting thing about recording 4K up to 60p is the fact that it actually oversamples that image from 6K. So it basically takes a 6K image and then brings it down to 4K, just giving you a little bit extra detail there. That's really nice. It just means that image is gonna look a little bit crisper than your standard 4K image, but it's not outputting at 6K. It's still outputting it at 4K, but it's just bringing it down from 6K oversampled but it can even shoot at more frames a second in 4K, so it can go all the way up to 120 frames a second. One thing to note when you're doing this is there's actually a 1.6 times crop, and that is additional to the 1.5 times crop that we've already mentioned because this is an APS-C body. 
Now, that is slightly annoying because I do prefer it if there's not a crop when I'm shooting, but you are shooting at 4K 120 on this incredibly small body, so the fact that there's some compromise is really not a surprise to me at all, and I'm more just thrilled that the camera has 4K 120 recordings than bothered about the crop at all. But if that still isn't slow enough for you, it can actually shoot up to 240p in 1080p. So obviously you're losing a little bit of resolution there, but you're gonna be able to shoot at 240p. Now, most notably, all of these modes that I just mentioned can be filmed at 10-bit 422, which essentially means there's just that huge amount of colors in there. Great for any color graders out there. Great for anybody that wants maximum control of their image. And if you do want maximum control of your image, one of the best things about that is that it also shoots in S-Log. So you can still have that Sony log profile. So if you wanna shoot super flat, I'll show you what a little bit of S-Log looks like now. And then you can grade it yourself just to make sure your colors look exactly how you want them. But if you want something that looks a little better straight out the tin, it also shoots in S Cinetone, which is what personal favorite of mine when it comes to color profiles. And it has all of the other standard color profiles that you're used to seeing within Sony cameras. But for me, I think S Log3 and S Cinetone are the most exciting, one for control and one for a really nice look straight out of camera. Now, when it comes to stabilization, it has up to five stops of IBIS, which is more than enough for me, especially because this body is so small, it's so compact, it's really easy to shoot with handheld. It means that actually that five axis stabilization is gonna deliver really clean, smooth motion. For an APS-C camera, there really isn't much out there, I think, that's competing with this, especially when you look at the Sony ecosystem and you compare it to the A6600, the video specs are blown completely out the water. So for me, I think this is an amazing option and actually brings it in line with some of its much more expensive cameras. Okay, let's talk about the body and its form factor. Now, the viewfinder has a 3.69 million dot EVF viewfinder, which is incredible. So when you're looking through the viewfinder, you're seeing great quality and high resolution images when you're shooting, which is very welcomed. On the left-hand side of the body, you have your typical slot. So everything you need as a photographer or filmmaker. So you've got one SD card slot here. You've also got a USB-C port, which is for charging. So you can charge the camera directly from a computer, which is nice. The old version didn't have that. And at the bottom, you have a micro HDMI port. The other thing that's really great about this body is that it takes the same batteries as some of the other camera models. So your A7R5s or your A7IVs, they have the same MPZ100 batteries. And now you have that in this APC body, which is amazing. Right, let's talk about the refresh rate. Now on this body, you can shoot at 11 frames per second continuously with no blackout or no buffering. If you're shooting in JPEG, you can do a thousand shots without any blackout or any buffering. But if you're shooting in RAW, you can do 59. Pretty impressive. So let's put it to the test. I'm going to shoot some of these paddle borders at 11 frames per second and see how the camera handles it. There you go. So that was 59 shots in RAW lossless compression. So let's try and shoot in JPEG and see what we get. I mean, wow, it's still going. It's amazing, there's no, no delay at all. Yeah, you're gonna be able to see the results. We've just got back to Abergavenny, where our hotel is, and I've got something very exciting to show you. So we have the new 70 to 200 f4 G lens. Now, this is an amazing lens, and on the crop sensor camera that we have here, it's going to be effectively a 105 to 300 lens. So that's going to give us some really nice compression, some really nice depth. And so we've come out to explore the local area and shoot some stuff around here. So we'll show you the results. Hello. Go on. So I found a spot that I think we can get a really nice photo with this lens. I like that we've got different layers. We've got the nice gr uh, ground greenery here that's moving on into the bushes and then we've got the castle just lurking in the back. And this is where this lens is really going to shine. So let's head in and try and get, get a nice shot. So the really nice thing about this lens is that because it is f4, it means that it's not only lighter, but it's also smaller 
which means that when you are using a body like this, it doesn't feel out balanced, which is quite nice. And the other thing is the price. I mean, if you're looking to get an f2.8 G Master lens, that's going to set you back quite a bit. And I think if you haven't used a lens like this before and you do want to experiment and try out, then this is definitely an option for you to go for. One thing that is really noticeable in this new lens is the upgraded autofocus. <laughs> you can really tell it apart from the predecessor. And when you couple it with the new technology that's built into these cameras that allows you to focus on animals and birds, it just makes shooting such a breeze. So overall, I'm impressed. One of the really amazing features of this lens is that it has macro capabilities. Yes, I said macro. Not only can you shoot telephoto photos, you can also get up close to your subject and shoot macro images. Now, if you're at 70 millimeters, you have a focusing distance of 26 centimeters. And if you're at 200 millimeters, you have a focusing distance of 42 centimeters, which is amazing. It gives you all of that space to get up close and personal with your subjects and capture that detail. Now, for the macro lovers out there, if you're shooting with this lens on a full frame sensor, you'll have a 0.5 magnification ratio. And if you use one of Sony's teleconverters, specifically the two times teleconverter, you can then get a one to one magnification ratio. And for those at home that don't know what that means, a one to one magnification ratio means that whatever you photograph using that setup will appear as life size on your sensor. So if you don't have the converter, hello, and you're shooting at 0.5 magnification, then it means whatever appears on your sensor is gonna be half its real life form. Hope that makes sense. So to summarize, Sony's new 70 to 200 f4G lens is incredibly fast, updated autofocus system. It's small, it's actually around 15% smaller than its predecessor, it's light, this comes in at 794 grams, whereas its predecessor comes in at 840 grams. So there's a substantial difference between the two. And the price of this is coming in at around 1750. So that's all the information you need. Enjoy. And we also wanted to tell you about one more thing, and that is the new microphone from Sony, the ECM M1. We're actually recording on the microphone right now so you can hear exactly how it sounds. Now, this is actually quite a serious test for the microphone though, because I'm actually probably about two meters away from the microphone and we're in actually a surprisingly loud environment considering probably how it looks aesthetically. There's a road just behind me and there's actually quite a lot of wind coming through, which can be quite difficult for the microphone. You can hear some dogs in the background as well. So we're not exactly sure how it's gonna sound. Obviously I'm not monitoring this because I'm busy chatting to you guys. So please let me know in the comments how you think it sounds. But I haven't told you guys about my favorite feature of this microphone and that is the control of the noise patterns or the noise prints. There are eight different noise prints and noise patterns that you can choose from, which are sort of pictured on screen for you here, just so that you can see. And it just allows you a huge range of flexibility when you're recording something. So right now I'm on the super, super directional noise print, so it's not really gonna get much. So if I even move over here, or move over here, I don't know if I'm still in the shot anymore, but you probably can't hear me very well because it's so directional but there's just a huge array to choose from I'm not going to go into all of them just because it would take me ages that basically there's a huge amount of flexibility and they're all sort of pictured right now so you, you should be able to get an idea of what I'm talking about now for some of you more professional audio recorders one thing that you're really going to love about this microphone is the fact that it actually supports four channel recording now I'll just run through the channels for you just so we know exactly what you're getting now obviously the first two channels are your bog standard stereo left and right channels of course we love those we're always going to need those when we're playing around with our audio but it also has an additional third channel and the third channel basically records an omnidirectional recording channel so let's say when we've just calibrated it and right now I'm recording super super directional but then actually it turns out that perhaps that was the wrong choice and I should have recorded a more wider soundscape, then having that third channel 
to then have an omnidirectional recording basically serves as a backup in case you chose the wrong one. Now when it comes to the fourth channel, that is also omnidirectional, the same as the third channel, but what it does is it records the audio at 20 decibels less than the third channel. This is just so cool because it basically means that let's say I went on set and I just completely messed up my audio recording. Well, having that third channel of the omnidirectional so that I made sure that if I got the direction wrong, it doesn't really matter because I've got that third channel. But then if I also got the gain wrong, then having that minus 20 decibel, it just kind of covers me. It saves you a lot of trouble. If you're on set and you make a mistake, this microphone has features built into it to help correct some of those mistakes. The microphone comes in at £349, which I know some of you are going to think that is a little bit pricey, and I do think it is on the pricier side of on-top camera microphones, but when you consider all of these features that are actually incredibly professional, when you consider the fact that you get all of these different noise prints, that actually means that you can only buy this microphone, whereas if you wanted to buy a super directional microphone, but then also sort of a microphone with a much wider noise print, then you're gonna to have to buy two. So yes, this microphone might come in a little bit more expensive than some of its competitors, but you're only going to need this microphone, whereas with its competitors, you're probably going to need two or three different mics to do the same job that this mic is doing all in one. And there you have it. So. Our final thoughts on the brand new Alpha 6700. I personally love this, right? And I think it's probably suited for social media content creators and also for, I'd say, amateur photographers who are looking to explore more in photography and maybe don't want to commit to the full frame pricing. So, I think it's a brilliant camera, what do you think? Yeah, I completely agree. I love the fact that it's like a true hybrid, like it's really good at photo and video. And I, I love that it has that Super 35 format. I know everybody's like full frame is all the hype nowadays, but actually Super 35 or APS-C, it has a real place in the market. And primarily I think just because of that size and that compactness, it's so small, it's a perfect travel camera. And I know we keep banging on about how light and small it is, but it's so light. Like it literally, you don't need a fancy camera bag to throw this around. You can just pop it in any old rucksack and you're not gonna notice and that's one thing I really love about this camera. So you can find this camera retailing for £1,450. Now I know a lot of you are thinking this is quite a steep price and I think if you are a photographer who's just starting out and wants to experiment with Sony cameras then yes you're right but we've got to remember this is a top-end APS-C camera and the technology inside this definitely warrants that price. I think if you are a social media content creator and you're looking to do this as a living or you're already making money from social media, then this is definitely a great investment. What do you think? Yeah, I completely agree. I think to me, this is almost like a second camera kind of vibe. You know, maybe you've already got one of the previous A series, which you could also get now really cheap second hand. But then if you're looking to upgrade because all of the other previous A60, 6000 series anything from that series of camera they're all really old right now so and in the last few years as we've mentioned sony have just had so many developments within their technology that if you're using one of those older systems and you're looking for a new camera i think this is a really good way to upgrade because obviously you can still retain that format that you're used to using that compact system and all of your lenses I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've had a lot of fun playing around with this camera. Yeah, and if let us know what you guys think of the camera and some of the other releases that Sony have had today because of all these other releases. We're really interested to hear what you think, but we're done for the day now. We're gonna head back to London, so I just wanna finish with the fact that I've been George. I've been Ron. And we'll catch you guys in another video. Bye.